What's up guys, it's Brad from Let Architect here. In this video, I'm going to show the concepts behind creating detailed, large-scale burning smoke plumes inside of Blender. As I mentioned in our previous video, we have automated the concepts in this video for creating smoke plumes in the Chaos add-on with a new custom smoke plume preset and wound pulse operator. I will show how to use these custom presets at the end of this video, but I think understanding the concepts behind this should help you adjust your settings to get a more unique result depending on the look you are going for. Before we get started, in case you missed it, we are having a 40% off December sale on all of our Blender Market products and add-ons, so feel free to use the discount code FILMEFFECTS for your 40% off. Anyways guys, let's talk about burning smoke plumes. So initially I thought creating large-scale smoke plumes would be a very simple process in Blender. I thought that if I added a smoke domain for simulation and a basic flow object to act as the fuel emitter for the scene that I would just have to experiment with the resolution divisions and maybe just add a wind force field to get the smoke to blow in the direction that I wanted. On a conceptual level some of this was correct but there were a lot of specifics that needed to be dialed in. While it was easy to crank up the resolution divisions for a general large scale look I found that I was getting really uniform simulation results like this which in my opinion were pretty boring. Even when I turned up smoke vorticity for some more random in the flow, the simulation still lacked the randomness and form that I wanted. When I looked online at reference images and renders of large-scale smoke plumes, they contained much more interestingly distributed dense clouds of smoke. Well, after a week of on and off experimentation, I ended up with this, which I think looks pretty awesome. Okay, so in my experimentation, I found that there are four main keys to getting these more randomly distributed dense clouds of smoke that make a great looking smoke plume. As some of you may expect, it all comes down to trying to recreate the real world environment properties inside of the smoke simulation. The first minor thing that I did was create a more random shape for the fuel emitter object. As you would expect, in the real world, a burning object is likely not a completely perfect cube or icosphere like we sometimes use as flow objects in our simulations. By sculpting my flow object, I was able to get a nicer initial shape for the plume, which carried on into the rest of the simulation. The second thing I did was pulse the fuel emission rate for the flow object over time. By doing this, we create some more randomness in the density of the smoke and fire coming from the emitter object, helping to create that larger scale detail. The third thing I dialed in was the smoke domain settings. Instead of cranking up the smoke vorticity like I thought initially, I kept the smoke vorticity fairly low but increased the flame vorticity all the way to 1. By increasing flame vorticity, the flames burn less like a candle and more like a large bonfire. Then I decreased the reaction speed for the fire down to 0.15. By doing this, the fuel takes a lot longer to burn out which makes the increase in flame vorticity we did earlier affect the scale of the simulation even more. In addition to these main two adjustments, I also kept the resolution divisions of the domain fairly high to keep that large scale look. Generally, the higher the resolution divisions, the larger scale the simulation will look. In this specific example, I used the fairly high number of 300 resolution divisions in Mantaflow, but I recommend at least 196 or above. Finally, the last thing I did to sell the large scale smoke plume effect was create a wind pulse throughout the scene. Instead of having a constant wind speed blowing on the simulation like I did previously, I keyframed a high wind strength value and a low wind strength value over the course of about one second. Then I made these keyframes cyclical over the course of the simulation so that the wind would constantly pulse. In my opinion, this is likely the most important aspect to creating the large scale cloudy detail in your smoke plume. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, because of all the experimentation we put into learning how to create these smoke plumes, we have added a new smoke plume operator as well as a wind pulse operator to the Chaos add-on for Blender to make this process much more streamlined. So to finish off this video, I'll create a smoke plume from scratch using this technique. So as you can see here, down past our explosion settings and checkboxes for various debris fields in the Chaos panel here, we have a panel called Chaos Extras with both a smoke plume and a wind pulse operator on it. To create your smoke plume setup, first we will go ahead and click on smoke plume. As you can see, a dialog box will come up where you can choose the highest fuel rate that you want for your flow object, the lowest fuel rate, and the pulse timing for the fuel. Of course, you can adjust these settings, but we will use the default for this example and just press OK. Now, as you can see, a smoke plume domain main as well as a smoke plume flow object are imported into your scene. We've added some random shape to the smoke plume, but one thing I like to do is go into sculpt mode and create an even more random shape so it's a little bit more unique. After adjusting the shape, I'll go ahead and place the smoke flow object down at the base of our domain here, and now we'll add our wind pulse to our scene. We'll place our 3D cursor off to the side here and select the wind pulse operator. Just like before, a dialog box will come up where we can choose the highest wind strength for the pulse, the lowest wind strength for the pulse, and the pulse timing, which will be cyclical throughout the scene depending on your input. Again, we'll just use the default settings and press OK, and then position our wind pulse toward the smoke plume flow object. 
As you can see here, when I scroll through the timeline, the wind field is pulsing, which is going to help create really nice looking large scale smoke. All right, so now we will just select the smoke domain here and we'll use the default settings in this example, but we do want to choose where to save our smoke cache data. So we'll go ahead and save our project and then select our folder here for our cache data. Now we will press bake data and see what we get right off the bat. All right, guys, so we are finished baking and this is our result without any noise detail added. It's looking really nice in my opinion, but there are so many different settings you can adjust to give it its own unique look. Of course, once you like the general look of your smoke plume, you can also bake high resolution noise here onto the sim to get a much more detailed final render like the example shown earlier. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and that you find this update to chaos useful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.